you know, this was our nation's longest war ever that I had uh, bo both the honor uh, and the heartbreak of fighting in. And I just want to echo Mr. Baird's statements and Mr. Mass. Your sacrifices were not in vain. We have had two generations of Americans that did not suffer planes flying into buildings, did not suffer suicide bombers going off on school buses, that didn't suffer yet another 9-11. Uh, because of your sacrifices, my friend, and so many uh, other soldiers that sacrificed along with you. But all those soldiers are asking for, all those veterans are asking for, all the Gold Star families are asking for, all the Afghans that are still being hunted down and tortured are asking for are some answers and some damn accountability. Anyone to be fired. I mean, that's what... The Democrats on the other side of the aisle just can't explain is not a single person has even been laterally transferred. In fact, they're being promoted. The woman in charge of, of, uh, of the coordinating the withdrawal has been nominated to be the ambassador to Iraq. So you know what? I don't care. They don't care how many times Tony Blinken has to inconvenience himself to come before the people's representatives. I don't care if it's once, twice, 10 times, 15 times until we get some answers. And you know what, coming in the days after the withdrawal, we hadn't had an investigation yet. We didn't even know what to ask them. But the things that my colleagues also don't want to acknowledge is that this report, willful blindness, is filled full of testimony of Tony Blinken's employees, of State Department Foreign Service officers, of military generals who testify under oath that time and time again, Blinken, Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, Biden, and Harris at the National Security Council ignored their advice, and this testimony contradicts their public statements. So, hell yes, he should be sitting right here answering for those contradictions and lies. Let's go through a few of them. Let's go through just a few. Biden and Blinken said they're not going to have people lifted off the embassy of the roof in Saigon. That was a lie. And we have testimony in this report that shows that. They were repeatedly warned that the Afghan government was going to collapse without our support. President Ghani came here in person and told him the country was failing. His own diplomats, which we saw in the dissent cable that my colleague raised that we would have never had access to but for this investigation, warned the Secretary of State in a dissent cable, dozens of diplomats, that Afghanistan was going to fall. And yet we pulled our forces out unconditionally regardless. Both Biden and Blinken said only 100 to 200 Americans that wanted to leave would be left behind. That was a lie. That number was quietly revised in the dead of night to be over five times as many. They said, we're not going to leave until we get every American out. Lie. Who was responsible for putting the original withdrawal date on September 11th, an insult to the September 11th families? We still don't know. I'd love for him to answer that question. So would the American people. One or two hours is what we're asking for, for some level of transparency and accountability. Biden and Blinken said our allies were completely on board. Lie. The Secretary General, our own generals, and our allies repeatedly asked them not to do this and not to do it in this way. Biden and Blinken, and Harris for that matter, said Al-Qaeda is gone, nothing to worry about. Lie. Al-Qaeda is back, ISIS is back, and terrorism is once again bubbling out of Afghanistan, but now stronger than ever to attack the homeland. I could go on and on. And what my colleagues don't want to admit is they haven't read this report. This is page after page of State Department testimony, general testimony, military testimony that contradicts this administration and their public statements. And then on Vice President Harris, which was it? Was she a wallflower for four years in these deliberations? 
Or was she at the table, which is statutorily required of a National Security Council? I've served inside the White House. The vice president's the first to speak and the last to speak, and she pounded her chest, tapped herself on the shoulder proudly. I was the last in the room in making these decisions. You know what's political? Inaction can be political too. And the inaction ranking member Meeks of this committee in the years after the withdrawal is also political. Trying to bury this disgrace is also political. Anthony Blinken saying, well, I'll come after the election, that's also political. You know what our elections drive? Our elections drive accountability. The American people get a vote for this disgrace. That's why Blinken isn't here, because the Harris campaign and the Biden administration, as he's trying to take a victory lap in New York, I don't know for what, but he's certainly trying for some reason, doesn't want this on the headlines. They want the American people to forget about it. We're not gonna let them, Mr. Chairman, and I thank you for your work. And the veterans community, the Gold Star families, and those of us that serve there will never let Tony Blinken, Jake Sullivan, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris forget this disgrace. And you know who's not gonna let them forget it either, Mr. Chairman? Al-Qaeda and ISIS and the terrorists that fully intend to attack our homeland once again. <clears throat> I yield and I will proudly vote Secretary Blinken in contempt. Gentleman yields, Chair recognizes Mr. Phillips. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I I'd like to yield a minute to begin to the ranking member, Mr. Meeks. Yeah, since my name was invoked, number one, incorrectly, when we were in charge, we did have hearings one. in the 117th. We had several hearings in the 117th, plus classified hearings, extensive classified hearings, where everybody had the opportunity. The difference is we wasn't playing politics with it. We wanted to talk about the 20 years. Everything leads up to one. They are interconnected. Number two, the Secretary of State's schedule is public. September is a difficult month because of what's going on in the world. The 118th Congress, if this is about fact-finding, if this is about not about elections, if this is about trying to see what we can do to make sure that we don't have a, a withdrawal in other wars like we have in Afghanistan for the record of the American people, the 118th Congress doesn't end until December 31st. <laughs> this subpoena that was given to the secretary was only issued on September the 18th. Everybody knows that the UN is in session this particular week. The reason why September is important, because it's political. It's the political season. It's the elections coming up. It's November 5th. That's the only reason why it's important. Otherwise, this hearing, as the secretary has been willing to talk, would have continued or could happen at his availability. But he gave his schedule to the chairman and said, this is my schedule. It's a public schedule. That's why he's not here, because he's doing his responsibility. I yield back to Mr. Uh, thank you, 